There was a time when the trade deadline in the NFL meant nothing. Teams rarely made deals in the middle of the season. Unlike what we see in Major League Baseball, where the topic of buyers and sellers reaches a fever pitch every July. It's also a time when we hear the words pretenders and contenders. Right now, the Seahawks are contenders. In fact, it's been rare when the Hawks haven't been contenders under head coach Pete Carroll. In the last 12 years, the Seahawks have had one losing season. One. As they approach the midway point of their schedule, they're somewhere where most people never thought they would be. They're not only on top of the NFC West, but they have the second best record in the NFC behind only the 7-1 Philadelphia Eagles. Why am I waxing on about the early success of the Seahawks? Because they could easily sit back with the talent they have and try to ride it deep into the playoffs, but they're not satisfied. That's why they made the trade for Giants defensive end Leonard Williams. Pass rushers are like pitchers in baseball. You can't have enough of them. That's why the Jets originally made Williams the sixth overall pick in the 2015 draft. That's why the Giants traded for him put the franchise tag on him for two straight seasons, and eventually signed him to a $63 million contract. He was that good. But the Giants have just become sellers. They have two wins and nowhere to go but down. They're also going to pay most of the $10 million still owed to Williams this season. Even more eye-opening, the Seahawks will reportedly pay Williams just $657,000 for his services, making him the lowest paid active player on their roster. In return, the Seahawks had to give up two draft picks for the former USC standout, a second rounder next spring, and a fifth round pick in 2025. It's a little early to say GM John Schneider fleeced the Giants in this deal, much like he did to the old regime in Detroit when he rescued Quandre Diggs in 2019. Remember, Seattle got Diggs and a seventh round pick, giving up only a fifth round pick in return. It was just another example of the dynamic duo of Pete and John never being satisfied. Each time the two get asked about possible deals, the company line is always, we're in on everything, meaning they'll listen to every team that calls. Williams joins a Seahawks defense that ranks fifth in the NFL in sacks, just five behind league leading Baltimore, who is next on the schedule. The Seahawks are also tied for third in the league, allowing just 3.6 yards per carry. That says a lot after the Browns, who came to town with the second best running game in the NFL, ran the ball 40 times, and the Seahawks defense still held them to just 3.9 yards per carry. That defensive line was no doubt tired from working in the trenches Sunday against that kind of offense. But the addition of Williams and fellow D lineman Frank Clark last week gives the Seahawks defensive line what it needs, depth. Over Pete Carroll's 14 seasons, his defensive lines were always at their best when players could rotate in and out with fresh legs, putting constant pressure on offensive lines. Listen, the deal for Williams is no guarantee the defense takes it up a rung on the ladder, but all you want as a fan base is a team that keeps climbing and doesn't sit around hoping to get to the top.